And what Peter is doing in 2 Peter 3 is giving them lessons about how you keep your legacy from being destroyed because they didn't know how long their life was going to be. In other words, how do you build a destruction-proof legacy? We could summarize what Peter was saying by saying he was exhorting his loved ones in how to rescue their treasures from the flood that was coming. What was the flood coming? It's a flood of fire. God is going to burn up everything. And if you want to not have, as 1 Corinthians 3.10 says, suffering loss as we stand in front of the judgment seat of Christ, Peter's saying, make sure that you preserve your legacy, your life that you live on earth, preserve it from being burned up in the end. You say, what was he talking about? Well, look back at verse 10 and 11, because what he's saying, and, and I can summarize the first lesson he gives, to save your legacy. You know, a lot of people have their portfolios and they have all these, you know, on the computer you can program to sell your stuff when it covers this price or moves this fast or this percent. You have all this, people are always, you know, trying to guard their, their portfolio. The Lord says you ought to be guarding your life so that when your life is over, what you live for doesn't get erased. It doesn't get thrown in the dumpster. So how do you do that? Well, he says this, number one, verses 10 and 11, this is probably the, one of the biggest ideas of the New Testament. This is what Jesus talked about all the way through the Gospels. This is what Paul talks about all the way through his epistles. Now, this is what Peter's talking about and Jude talks about and James talks about it and John talks about it. So, I mean, it's kind of universal. This is what he says, beware of materialism. Let me show you what I mean. Look at verse 10. If you look back at the words, uh, starting in verse 10, Peter says that the Lord is going to come like a thief in the night and the heavens are going to pass away with a great noise. The elements will melt with fervent heat and the earth and the works in it are going to be burned up. What he says is everything is going to be burned up. Now look at verse 11. Therefore, since everything is going to be dissolved, how should you live? Well, do you know what the simple, do you know what the first grader would say? Well, if everything's going to get burned up, I shouldn't live for the stuff that's going to get burned up. And you say, bingo, you got it. See, materialism is living for what's going to be burned up by God. And Peter says, beware, you're not living for what God's going to burn up. We must not find our joy in what God says we are going to lose in the end. He says, don't live for what's going to be taken away from you. We should not find our joy in things. You notice what it says in verse 11? All these things will be dissolved. Don't put your joy in something that's going to be dissolved. Do you know how disheartening it is if you're holding on to something and God has to pry it out of your hands and blow it up? It's like, you shouldn't have that. He's going to dissolve it. We should not have our satisfaction in things. things. Don't now, hope in things. That is materialism. Materialism is living for material things. In fact, God describes materialism in his word as covetousness. You ever heard the word covetousness? He, he calls it greed, and he also calls it possessiveness or selfishness. And those things are always negative. Greed is an attitude that gets demonstrated by the action of possessiveness. That means I think that everything I have belongs to me. God says nothing you have belongs to you. It all belongs to me. What have you that you have not received? Why do you act like you didn't receive it? Why do you act like it's yours? Possessiveness and selfishness is me saying, it's my money, it's my time, it's my body, it's my life. God says it's not. Even if you're not saved, it's not yours. He's the creator. He owns all. And we need to think about possessiveness is, is the idea that what we have is ours. And then that, that's, by the way, is an action. An attitude is covetousness. That's even worse. Covetousness is longing for what we don't have. It's longing with an intense desire for what I don't have, and I want it so bad it's on my mind all the time. And I'm planning and scheming and I'm willing to sacrifice and I'm willing to change and, and, and trample over almost anyone or anything to get something I want. 